Good evening. Welcome to Politica Podcast. Today we have Rachel Terry, and, and Rachel is running for the Attorney General. I am. It's nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, what what motivated you to do this? I, it, you know, it's tough to run for public office. It is tough. Um, I'm motivated because I really love the law and the power it has in individual lives and to shape policy. I've been a lawyer for about 20 years. And seven years, I was in the attorney general's office um, handling civil rights litigation. And I worked on some of the largest civil cases the state has ever had. And even though they were big and they had massive policy implications, there was also the individual component. When you sit with a person in court, when you sit with a person at a hearing, in a deposition, in interviews, and you have to sit with them and you see the impact on that individual's life, um, it really had a profound impact on me because there's the individual component and then there's the bigger picture. How does this one case fit into shaping lives for everyone in so, Utah? So at, at the attorney general's office, if you're, if, if you're lit litigating, so are you the prosecutor, uh, prosecution or the defense? Defense on, so you're on the, the civil state. side. So I was defending the state. So there's two sides of the office. You have the criminal side and they prosecute the bad guys, whether it's, um, you know, violent crimes or fraud or, or, those, or domestic violence. And then there's the civil side that has um, the litigation division does the work for the state um, in defending claims that are covered by the Division of Risk Management. And I'm the director of the Division of Risk Management now. So I continue to work with them on their cases. But then there's antitrust and there's banking and there's advising universities. I mean, the, the practice area for the office is incredibly broad. And I loved working there. It was it was wonderful. I, I felt like I really made a difference um, in in shaping things, in developing the law in a way that was good for the state. And my litigation uh, strategy when I was there is when my client was wrong, when the government was wrong, we would do our very best to apologize and try to make it right. But when we were right, we would fight. And um, so from that experience and now as I work as the director of risk management, I've seen the power that the attorney general's office can really have on the state, making it a wonderful place to live. There's a lot of really hot issues right now that they are, that the state of Utah is on the forefront. So what, what are some of those issues? So our lands are a big issue, uh -huh. and uh, that's something I care about. I'm from rural Idaho. Okay. And, uh, you know, grew up in... Idaho kind of has the same problem. We uh, same the, problem. Controls most of the land. Most of the land in the state. And so when you're close to the land, it, those land policies have a particular impact on how you feel about the federal government. And... And so we're working on land, the attorney general's office is working on land policy. And then when you look at protecting children, and particularly right now, the state has passed laws to say um, what kind of access a social media platform should have to our children and what they can market to them and the algorithms and all of that. Uh, the, the Utah attorney general's office is at the forefront of that. They are litigating and they are fighting that fight. I have 13 year old twins. So the social media piece is particularly important to me. And before I was at the attorney general's office, I worked for the board of education and I was a prosecutor for educator misconduct cases. Okay. And every time there was a case involving uh, sexual misconduct, sexual abuse or boundary violations, they always involved uh, a social media platform, a Snapchat and Instagram because of the way um, predators can use those platforms. Right. And so that's, an important part of what they're doing. And then the law enforcement component of the office. It's it's the investigators and the prosecutors for the crimes that, that need to be addressed here in Utah. Drugs are a huge problem. And those that are coming into Utah's borders, the gangs and violent crimes and making sure that, you know, the attorney general's office handles all the public corruption cases. And so these are the big things that are happening. And I want to be a part of them because I want to be a part of how uh, the attorney general's office represents and advocates for the state of Utah. So, so, so what can you do that that our current attorney general hasn't done? Well, uh, General Ray is, has done some really good things, but I would approach it quite differently. 
I think the trouble we've had for the last 20 years with the Attorney General's office is we've treated it just like any other political position. And we need to refocus on the attorney part of Attorney General. The Attorney General is supposed to be setting the direction and the policy for the largest law firm in the state and showing up every single day to advocate for the state of Utah without getting distracted by national politics or um, activities that are not Utah focused. And so for me, my my platform, my agenda, my strategy for the office is to really refocus on the attorney part of attorney general and make sure that I am directing the direction for the office, that it is operating the way that it's advocating for Utah values. Interesting. So so what what special skills do you have that that make you a good candidate to be in charge of this law? law firm, right? Huge law firm. Huge law firm. Yeah, over 500 attorneys, legal professionals, and investigators. It's a, it's the state's so largest where, law firm. So where are all those people? I know where the office <laughs> is in the Capitol, but... They- yeah, there's a t- yeah, there's a tiny office in the Capitol. Uh, I worked at the Heber Wells building downtown. There, And then there's attorneys all over the state, and there's different offices because the attorney general's office also likes to embed attorneys with the agencies that they work with. You know, I have friends who are assigned to work with the Division of Natural Resources, friends who are embedded with universities, friends who are um, uh, working for uh, UDOT. And then you have our investigators who are out there investigating crimes and public corruption and the prosecutors are, um, they have their own office and who are out and about. And doing a lot of good for a lot of people. And and those attorneys, I'm glad you asked me about what makes my particular skill set suited. Mm-hmm. I feel like my entire career has led up to this moment. Like my resume, if we were just talking, like if you were just to be on a hiring committee, right. and I think of the delegates as my hiring committee. Right. If we were to sit down and the delegates and I are interviewing, and you look at my resume and you look at the resume of every other candidate, mine is tailor-made for this. And it's because I have experience in the office doing actual litigation, representing state entities, representing school districts, representing universities, working with UDOT, working with um, the governor's office and the legislature on um, on bills and policy, both as an attorney and now as the head of a state agency. Um, as a risk director, I'm working very closely with the attorney general's office, the governor's so, office. So as a risk director, would you be, uh, you would be assessing cases that are coming up, lawsuits yep. potentially, and uh, trying to understand what liability we really had in that situation. And then you right. make recommendations or what do you do? Yeah. So risk management, not a lot of people realize what it is because it's one of those unseen state agencies that actually has a huge uh, impact on the state. So it provides the insurance and risk management for the state. So a building collapses, a you know managing all the uh, property damage from the earthquake for state buildings, but then like the civil litigation, um, personal injury, employment claims, civil rights claims, those all come to state risk. We have claims adjusters that work. So like them. this, like this case at the University of Utah where Lauren McCluskey was kidnapped. Yeah. That would be something yep. that would have come to your. In fact, uh, yes, that was a case I worked on specifically. Yes. So those come to risk management and then the AG's office rep, it does the litigation for risk management. But, you know, just in the last year, I've been in this position for a year. We have already, um, I've been able to lead uh, innovations for that office and we've already saved a million dollars and we're changing things up and we are poised to save the state of Utah tens of millions of dollars on how we do insurance. And so heading a state agency, actually litigating claims, being a private practice representing businesses and banks and coal mine operators and working for the Board of Education, these are all the kinds of touch points that uh, the Attorney General's office has, and I have been engaged in every piece of that. So I feel like my experience is tailor-made for being the state's next Attorney very, General. Very good. Well, we're going to take a break and we'll come right back, okay? Thank you. Hi, I'm Rachel Terry, and I'm running to be your Attorney General. 
A lot of people don't know what the Attorney General does. The mission of the Attorney General is to protect Utahns, Utah's resources, and uphold the law. While the governor and legislature each have their own legal counsel, the Attorney General is the legal counsel for the entire state. Any legal issue impacting the state is handled by the Attorney General. This year, you have the chance to select a new Attorney General. While there are other big races on the ballot, few will impact your life as much as the Attorney General. There is important work to be done to protect Utahns and our valuable resources. Now, more than ever, we need to fight federal overreach and protect our kids from big tech, my kids from big tech, and your kids from big tech. So please, join me in this fight by going to your caucus on March 5th and running to be a state delegate. I sincerely ask you for your vote on April 27th and I hope to see you at the convention. Welcome back to Politicket. So uh, we're talking to Rachel Terry, the candidate for the for the Attorney General, and uh, that's fabulous. Okay, so we were talking about your experience, uh, the risk management director. Maybe you could go into just a little bit we were talking about how you get ahead of a lot of these lawsuits and, and, and you're the insurance. So does the state have insurance outside of? Yeah, it's actually, um, I'll nerd out for just a minute, but okay. uh, we have two kind of three buckets of insurance, property insurance, auto insurance, and then general liability. And your general liability is your personal injury. It's your employment claims. It's uh, your civil rights cases and civil rights is super broad. So I was a civil rights litigator. I had a case about a bank being closed. I had a case about a, a trade secret um, at the Space Dynamics Lab in Logan. And then I had the cases involving a sexual assault on um, university campuses. And so anytime someone asserts that their constitutional rights were violated in any way. That, that's where the civil rights. That's where civil rights comes in. So they're very broad. And, um, and so we have these buckets of insurance. And what's happened in the market for insurance over the last couple of years is because we keep having these major catastrophes across the country, Maui burning down, um, huge uh, storms in Texas and Florida and California. What it's done is it's made the um, property market very, very expensive. And so we as a state need to have property insurance for all. Of, we have thousands of state buildings and school districts. So Utah is unique in that we provide insurance through the state for our for our K through 12 and some charter schools in addition to all of the higher ed and our state buildings. So we have thousands of buildings that we're insuring. So by pooling that though, you by can save it, a lot. We save all, millions of dollars. Well, insurance has gotten so expensive that we're having to look at this. Um, and right now I'm working with the legislature and the governor's office to try to create a new kind of property program that will make insurance more sustainable, more manageable, and more cost effective, even as the market itself becomes more volatile. So is that by coinsurance and not other things like, That's right. you, you know, you may, you may have a huge deductible to the main source, but then maybe you have insurance to fill that in. That's right. We're basically moving to a high deductible plan, just like families have done in their medical providers, you know, where they take on a higher deductible to keep their premiums more manageable. We're doing that in our, in our property space. So, and then, and then do you have, you, you have other insurance to cover some of that liability or? That's right. The state has a billion dollars of insurance in the property. And so it takes almost 60 different commercial carriers to create an insurance program. So while each of us is used to working with a state farm or uh, all state, the state of Utah works with uh, insurance providers um, across country and through London, Lloyd's of London, to create a billion dollar insurance program, one of the largest in the entire country and, and really the world because of the way we pool. Really? Um, yeah. It, it's one of the bigger policy b Huge. because because things are separated. Yeah, normally K through 12 would have its own and higher ed would have its own and states would, the state entities would have its own. But in Utah, we have found that it's more cost effective and we can actually give better coverage by pooling all of those assets into one pool and sharing the risk. So so what what would Lloyd's do with that with that piece? They, they're kind of the... Mm -hmm. So they're the, we pay up to a certain 
part. So right now, three and a half million dollar deductible, and then we push the rest of the liability onto well, onto sixty different providers, but they each take a little piece of it. I see. Yeah, it's um, insurance isn't uh, the most interesting topic to the general public, right? But, but to me, as someone who like really gets into the weeds of the work, um, I love it because because also when you deal with insurance. You get to see the overlap of the law and policy and protecting people. So the mission of the Attorney General's office, the stated mission, is to protect Utah, its people, and its resources, and to uphold the Constitution, the U.S. Constitution, the state Constitution, and the laws of the, of the state of Utah. And so in doing so, you also have to evaluate any risk we take on as a state when we push certain policies that that we're not certain how they're going to shake out in litigation. Right. But those are our, those are the legislature's decisions to make because we've elected the legislature. We've elected so, you to so make So is that – it, it, well, it, is that where uh, – so so you probably have to write a fiscal note then on, on – That's right. S some of the laws where you say we're going to take on extra risks, so there's going to be insurance That's right. premiums out of that. So I look at all the bills um, that are going to potentially create risk for the state of Utah. And there are policies that we have decided as a state, the state legislature has decided are going to be the policies of the state where we know there's going to be litigation. And so when I look at those and because the litigation is covered by state risk, I my job is to let the legislature I, know I'm gonna throw, how much it will cost. I'm going to throw one out there oh, that, okay. that I think is probably going to come up on your radar, right? <laughs> uh, Senator Sandel just introduced a bill. Okay. That uh, basically is pushing back against federal overreach. So, so it basically says, look, if if a federal agency or the uh, uh, president writes an executive order, and uh, you know the governor or the uh, the speaker or the president of the Senate or the legislature can basically say, look, I think this is unconstitutional. This is not an enumerated power of the federal government. Oh. And so then we will go into a special session and uh, then the legislature can vote on and uh, we'll vote on a resolution that basically tells the state agencies, you cannot enforce that federal law. So this is this is going back to that. Yeah. Federalism, right? That's right. So, so just give me your off the cuff. You <laughs> off know the what cuff. the the way I, I mean, how you know I, I mean this gets at the federal lands issues. This gets at you know this this idea of federalism and the overreach, right? And and it's a way I think of reversing the the way it's handled because now the federal government has to sue us rather than we suing them. Yes, and, and they will. We know that the federal government is going to do that. There are different bills that pop up where we know, because of the nature of the bill, we know that this nonprofit will sue us, that this individual will sue us. Now, um, in terms of when I put my hat on as a state risk director, if we think they're going to sue the state or school for money damages, that's a state risk covered claim. And we, we've we been covering litigation for you know decades, so we can gauge how much that's going to cost. Any super complicated litigation is at least a half a million dollars. When it comes to those kinds of lawsuits where we have drawn a line in the sand and we want to where we know the fight's going to be, is this law constitutional, unconstitutional? That's not a risk-covered claim. That's the attorney general's office representing the state of Utah. And the attorney general's job is that when the legislature passes a bill, is to uphold and defend the law of the state. It's not to decide if the attorney general likes it or thinks it's a good one. Like That's not the attorney general's job. The attorney general is supposed to be the advocate for the state, and the legislature and the governor get to decide on what the policy and the laws of the state are. And so in that circumstance, if if the if the legislature says this is this is where we call, this is the line we're drawing, this is the law that we're passing, then my job would be to fight, to fight to protect the law of the state of Utah and and um with all the resources available to us. And we'd put, you know, the AG would put a fiscal note on it to say, if this is the path you want to go on, legislature. This is what it This is what it'll could. cost. Here's what you need to set aside to be prepared for that. 
but um, you as the center you know, well, of the purse strings. Well, I, and, and, and the reason why I get at that is that I, you know, we have this severe problem, I think, in the state of Utah that we mentioned it before, the federal lands issues, right? It's huge. The, the federal government controls most of the land in Utah, right? And I, I mean, there's there's been laws passed already that says we need we need pushback right and nothing's happened right right and so what would your position be on you know defending the state's rights and well i guess you already said it yeah right. well and the the public lands issue i think um a lot of our citizens don't understand what that means they just they just hear us say we're going to fight the federal government and that feels very abstract because there's not a personal connection to litigation, but it's so personal. That state sovereignty issue is so personal. It impacts how much uh, it costs to heat our homes. It costs how much it impacts. Is there enough energy so that we can build more businesses? In fact, um, because of energy policy, we uh, there was an experience where in Cache Valley, they weren't sure they had enough uh, energy available on the grid to support a huge new manufacturer that wanted to come to to Cache Valley. It's, so it's very personal, but a lot of our citizens don't realize how personal it is to them. So, so my position is we should be defending, and the Attorney General's office should be defending our right as a sovereign, as a state sovereign, uh, consistent with the laws that uh, our legislature has passed, and to help the citizens understand how it impacts them personally and directly to make sure that we are taking that position. Yeah. And, you know, you know I think what motivated this uh, really is the idea of of the the Fed c coming in and say, we're going to close the coal plants in Utah, oh, right? Yeah. And, and our position is, okay, well, then give us some other source of cheap, reliable base power, right? That's right. It because, doesn't exist. Because solar and wind don't cut it for that part of the power. That's they're right. good alter they're 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 good additions right but it's like, but it makes me think of you know the ads where it says part of a delicious you know healthy breakfast and it has a picture of a bowl of cereal but also eggs and bacon and juice well solar and wind right now are like that you know fun cereal on the side but the bacon and eggs for the state of Utah is coal and that's what keeps our businesses and our homes running and makes energy efficient and accessible and cost effective. And so when we say, well, we're only going to do solar and wind, well, those are important, part of a healthy breakfast. Right. They are not the base load. They are not what's going to make it so that we can sustain our growth as a state. Yeah, because you know, I, I I think ultimately we're gonna we're, we're gonna go to to nuclear, right? But it takes over twenty years to to get a permit to even start. Which is ridiculous. Right. And so at some point, you know, we, I, you know, my personal belief is we can't let California set the energy policy for the state of Utah, right? But, and, and so that would, that would be something that would really involve the attorney general's office ultimately, right? Absolutely. And so- Because this is something that we'll surely get sued about. It is 100% something that's going to be part of litigation. And so, and so the attorney general who's taking over needs to be prepared for that fight, which I am. Because litigation is how we address the federal overreach. We can pass that, that bill that says no more federal overreach, but that's only going to be effective when we say we really mean it and now we're going to litigate it. Right. And that's what the attorney general is supposed to do. Very good. Well, you know what, we're out of time. And so uh, why don't you just, you know, I, I always say, look into your camera there and, <laughs> okay. and uh, tell the citizens watching why they should vote for you for attorney general. I'm asking Utah to vote for me because I want to be your attorney and I will advocate for the state of Utah. I want to focus on the attorney part of the role. I'm a lawyer, not a politician. When you have a legal problem, you go to your lawyer, you don't go to a politician. And that's what I will do for the state of Utah is I will be your advocate. I will fight. I will uphold the laws of the state of Utah to protect Utah and, and the people in Utah and the resources. My resume is tailor-made to this. I will be transparent. I will be accessible. And I will always be ethical and professional. 
So thank you so much. Very for... good. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, appreciate you stopping by and we'll see you guys next week.